Hi everybody, this is Lauren Berthelsen with Leatherati.com and I'm privileged to be here today with Bob Wingate, who is the founder and publisher of BoundandGag.com. Yes. First Bound and Gag magazine. Yes. And now BoundandGag.com. That's right. Thanks for taking some time to stay with us here at the IML, Bob. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. So tell me, for those, the, the one person hiding under a rock out there has no idea what Bound and Gagged is. Tell us what, what Bound and Gagged is. Bound and Gagged uh, started out um, more or less as an offshoot of the New York Bondage Club. When I began that, I founded that in 1984, and I didn't know how to found a club or what to do with a club, so I sent it to all the people who wanted in. I had announced it. This is started again. Uh, I'd announced it in uh, the New York Native, which was a paper of the time, and I sent out questionnaires to all the people who wanted to join, and I had about three to five hundred people the first week I advertised it in the paper who wanted to join. Wow. I sent out questionnaires with essay questions on them asking about their first, best, worst, etc. bondage experiences. And um, I guess no one had ever asked them important questions before, questions they deemed important, and they wrote back to me uh, amazing accounts of what they'd done, what they'd done to others, et cetera, et cetera. And after about a year or so, I started reading them and I realized I knew more about men's bondage fantasies than anyone probably had ever found out in the history of the world. Huh. And uh, we could, uh, I could put it together in a book or something. It occurred that a mass magazine would last longer. And so I started a little digest size publication. And that's basically how it began. And it went on for 24 issues as a small digest and then um, I was pulled kicking and screaming into a full-sized edition yeah and eventually we went to color and we kept going for 18 years the internet came along about 10 years into our um, doing it and we went online as well even then at the beginning there was no one else except maybe drummer magazine that never did go online really and uh, that's pretty much the story of the magazine. We went on until 2005, and then a number of things happened that made us decide it might be time to do something else, made my partner, now spouse, Lee, and I decide that. And uh, we stopped in 2005, and then 2008 we wanted to go back, so we started thinking about it seriously and finally found some people to help us develop it and design it, and now we're on the way. You must have an amazing trove of material after all those years. Well, we do. We have 25 years' worth of archives, I'd say, that's over, well over a thousand stories, and they're phenomenal. I mean, they really are great. People just wrote everything. We really focused on personal experiences and asked people not to write like writers, but just to write me a letter telling me what they'd done. Right. And it really seemed to work very well. So we have, as I say, over a thousand stories. We must have tens of thousands of photos, many of which we've never really right. you know, put out there. And we made 30 videos uh, you know, before 2005, and we're going to begin making those again, too. Now, your photographs, are they from uh, famous authors, or are they self, you know? Well, mo basically, I'm the famous author, if you will. I'm a famous snapshotist. I'm a terrible photographer. But, <laughs> you know, I point and shoot, and I always figure that the action is good. You know, something will get across, and it did. You know, there's a quality, I guess, of rawness. We had other uh, photographers working for us. There was James Bond, who had a whole huge circle of great fans, who did great bondage, and uh, other photographers working for us. We did photo contests in which readers um, sent out, you know, sent us for various prizes, their own photos, and so we've amassed a huge trove right. of them. Well, what I always loved about your, the photos in Inbound Gag was that realism. They didn't feel staged, they didn't feel fluffed, they felt like you were really in the action. That was pretty much the case. Yeah. We, you know, we did a scene. Um, I tied them up and somebody else photographed them, or somebody else tied them up and I photographed them, or I tied them up and then photographed them. You know, it was always that. We were a small operation always. Sure, yeah. Now, do you consider yourself a, a master rope artist, or are you a, no, just a guy who likes to tie guys up and do no, mean things to them? I really never learned how to tie a knot properly. I learned how to tie a knot in such a way that they couldn't maybe reach it with their hands. So my square knot, which was too often a granny knot, um, <laughs> you know, the idea was that they shouldn't be able to escape. Right. You know, I, I appreciate the really beautiful rope work that people do. I never really did it. 
Yeah, I me mean, I just want to tie them up so I can do things. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I figured if 10-year-old kids can tie each other up, and or they did in my day, I don't know what they're doing now. Um, but oh, if yeah. they could do it, then any adult should be able to work it so you could tie up somebody. I agree. Yeah. Now, what are some of the surprises that happened over the years, 18 years that you were doing this? Surprises. Um, the su biggest surprise was that I think it's huge fantasy, you know, fetish, if you will, for 90% of the population. Mm. And then there are 10% who just don't care at all. Now, you mean 90% uh, of the interested. general population? I think the general population. I think wow. everybody loves the idea of being made helpless and forced to do things that they want to do but can't admit. Uh. Um, that was always my suspicion. And uh, that's really why I started a magazine, too, and everything, because I wanted to find out why I was so turned on by it. Like the old, uh, the old Wild Wild West TV shows. All those They got things. tied up with, with regularity, which I thought was amazingly hot. Uh, yes, I think that was probably the most popular of all, you know, for my generation it was the Hardy Boys uh, stories. For your generation, you're a little younger, it was the Wild Wild West. And for a lot of people, it was Walt Disney movies, um, who also, which also had a lot of kids tied up, and we right. were all kids at the time. <laughs> That's amazing. So, yeah. Now, you, so BoundAndGag.com is, is making a resurgence now. Yes, there is right now a BoundAndGag.com, which is our old website, right. in which people can view streaming our old streaming videos. Right. Um, in the fall, probably around Folsom, uh, Folsom Street Fair, around that time, maybe a month later, we, ex we plan to relaunch that site. It will look completely different. It will ha be full of bells and whistles. It will, you know, have everything, we like to believe. And how's that process been? It's been, it was very, very slow for a very long time, and now it's galloping. Beautiful. So it's going very nice. That's good. Now, this is your, is this not your first time at IML, is it? No, no, no. The last time say. was in 2005. Okay, all right. And uh, at that time, a number of very unfortunate things that were happening at the time. Our editor died suddenly just a month before IML. Right. Um, what else happened? Then there was the 2257 sure. business that came along, and I forget what else. It was a third thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we lost our credit card <laughs> oh. <laughs> abilities that we had never had any chargebacks. Right. We were a company that were virtually without chargebacks. That's amazing. And yet the credit card companies decided that uh, they didn't want to deal with our with right. the adult thing for whatever reason. Uh, a lot of them do that. Yeah. Now, the publication will continue as well, or is it just no. going to be online? So, no, okay. I think to print nowadays, it, for us, would be suicide. It was just just don't get enough people right. reading it. And we still have our old issues, as you can see, we were giving them away here. I have a blog, I sell them for a dollar a piece on my blog. Um, but um, we will have them to sell to people right. if they want them, but otherwise we're just going to. They'll be able to read them online. Sure. Everything sure. will be online. Now, did you set out to be a publisher? Was that your goal in life? or did you just I was an editor yeah. of a regular trade publication right. when I set out to, started out doing Bound and Gags. And in the beginning, I thought I had two years worth of digest-sized publications, and then I'd continue with my regular day job. After three months, I had to quit my day job because the amount of mail, uh, you know, was just overwhelming, and we were doing very well. And we continued very, doing very well until the end. Right. We should never have stopped. Well, the magazine was always legendary. I mean, anybody yeah. who knew anything about, had any interest in bondage at all, knew about Bound and Gagged. Well, in the beginning, there was nothing else. No. There was Drummer Magazine and us. Right. And uh, it's a different landscape now, especially different. online. So how are you going to distinguish yourself online? You know, that's what I without asked giving away everybody. trade secrets. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> there are no trade secrets. I think you kind of, you know, you, we ex for us there is no right way or wrong way to do things, as long as what you do works for you and you don't get hurt or hurt anybody more than they want to be hurt. Um, that's, that's good, you know? As we used to say, what was it, uh, you know, erotic adventures and survivable bondage, or survive bondage. I don't remember what our little slogan right. was, but it was basically, you know, that's it. We don't have, we don't find, have a way to do that or think that there is a right way or a wrong way to right. do it. If you tie somebody's hands behind their back for the first time and they've never had it happen before, believe me, you know, they'll react in the way, you know. And they're not going to know if it's a square knot or a granny knot, are they? They won't care. <laughs> I, you know, and I don't care if they can eventually get out of it, but you just want to, I want right. to keep them helpless for at least, you know, as long as I can. As long as you need to. Yeah. Right? 
Well, that's excellent, Bob. Thank you so much for taking some time. I really okay, appreciate well, it. Okay, well, thanks very much. We're looking forward to seeing the yeah. new uh, boundgag.com, too, when it comes out. Well, thanks very much, and IML has been great, and we've had a wonderful reception here. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you.